Hey guys, today I'll be doing AV Evasion Shellcode. Learn shellcode and coding, packing, binders, and cryptors. All right, task one, intro. In this room, we'll explore how to build and deliver payloads, focusing on avoiding detection by common AV engines. We'll look at different techniques available to us as attackers and discuss the pros and cons of every one of them. Objectives. Learn how shellcode are made. Explore the pros and cons of stage payloads. Create stealthy shellcode to avoid AV detection. PREX. It's recommended that you have some prior knowledge of how antivirus software works and a basic understanding of encryption and coding. While not strictly required, some knowledge about basic assembly language can also be helpful. Also, we recommend having a basic understanding of reading code and understanding functions C and C sharp. All right, let's go ahead and continue. So looks like we have 11 tasks here. Challenge two. In this challenge, we prepare a Windows machine which a with a web application. So let you upload your payloads. Once upload the payloads will check will be checked by the AV and execute if found to be clean of malware. The main goal of this challenge is to evade antivirus software installed on the VM and capture the flag in the file system. Feel free to try all the techniques discussed throughout the room by uploading them to this site. So let me start the machine so we can see that populate. Points to remember, try to combine the techniques discussed in this room. The website supports executable files only. Once the AV scans the uploaded file and no malicious code is detected, the file gets executed. Thus, if everything is put together correctly, then you should receive a reverse shell. Hmm, interesting. You can ignore the questions for the task for now. Be sure to come back to them once you have successfully bypassed AV and gained shell. Deploy the attached VM to follow up with the content of the room before continuing to the next section. The AV will deploy in the browser and should appear automatically in split view. In case the AV is not visible, use the blue show split view button at the top right. If you prefer to RDP, you can do that as well using the credit. Okay, so um, my machine is deployed. I am ready to move on to task three. I'm also gonna start up my own attack box. If you want, you can use their split screen, the attack box they provide here. Um, highly recommend you use your own so you can store these uh, things that you've learned, these shells and everything like that. So uh, let me go ahead and run my script first. I have a script that will connect to um, the Try Hack Me network rather than having to do it manually every time. So I'm going to just kind of give you an intro on how I do it. And uh, I have a video on how to do it. So if you're interested in learning that, I highly recommend you watch that video. And uh, I'm just going to run it. It's going to ask for my password. So we'll just pause. All right. And then it does the matrix thing and it connects to their network. Really, it's just connecting to uh, via VPN. All right. Cool. So. Uh, let's move on to the next task here. Uh, obviously, we're going to have to come back to task two to input the flags. Um, all right, sounds good. Task three, PE structures. This, this, mm -mm, sorry. this task highlights some of the high-level essential elements of PE data structures for Windows binaries. What is PE? Windows Executable file format, aka portable execution, is a data structure that holds information necessary for files. It is a way to organize executable files coded on a disk. Windows operating system components such as Windows and DOS loaders can load it into memory and execute it based on the parsed file information found in the PE. In general, the default file structure of the while, uh, Windows binaries, such as exe, DLLs, and object code files, has the same PE structure and works in the Windows 
operating system for both x86 and x84 uh, 64 uh, CPU architecture. Okay, AP structure contains various sections that hold information about binaries, such as metadata and links to memory addresses of external libraries. One of the section is the PE header, which contains metadata information, pointers, and link to address selections in memory. Another section is the data selection, which includes containers that include information required for the Windows loader to run a program, such as an executable code, resources, link to libraries, data vari variables, etc. So you have your THM executable, P structure, P headers, metadata, data pointers, entry point, selection table, section code, import data. And I'm guessing we're going to alter this so it doesn't get picked up by antivirus. There are different types of data containers in P structures, each holding different data. The first one is text, stores the actual code of the program. Second one is data, holds the initialized and defined variables. Third, BSS holds the uninitialized data, declare variables with no assigned values. The fourth one is R data, contains the read only data. Five is E data, contains exportable object and relatable table information. Six is I data, import objects and related table information. Seven is reloc image relocation information. Eight is R source links, external resources used by the program, such as images, icons, embedded binaries, and manifest files, which has all the information about the program, version, Arthur's company, and copyrights. The P structure is vast and complicated topic, and we are not going to go into too much detail regarding the headers and data structure, the selection. This task provides a high-level overview of P structures. If you're interested in getting more information on the topic, we suggest checking out the following THM room where the topic is explained in greater details. Windows internals, discrete PE headers. You can get more in-depth detail about PEs if you check the Windows PE format doc website. When looking at the PE contents, you'll see it contains a bunch of bytes that aren't human readable. However, it includes all the details the loader needs to run the file. The following are the example steps in which the Windows loader reads an executable binary and runs it as a program. One, header selection, DOS. Windows optional headers are parsed to provide information about the exe file, for example, the magic number that starts with MZ, which tells the loader that this is an executable file. File signatures, where the file is compiled for x86 or x64 of a CPU architecture. Created timestamps, parsing the selection table details, such as number of selections, the file contents. Three, mapping the file contents into memory based on the the entry point address and the offset of the image base, RVA related virtual address, address related to the image base, four import DLLs and other objects are loaded into memory, five the entry point address is located and the main execution functions run. Why do we need to know about PE? There are a couple of reasons why we need to learn about it first. Since we are doing since we are dealing with packing and unpacking topics, the technique requires details about the PE structure. The other reason is that AV software and anti-malware analysts analyze EXE files based on the information in the PE header and other PE sections, thus to create or modify malware with AV evasion capability targeting a Windows machine. We need to understand the structure of the Windows portable executable file and where the malicious shellcode can be stored. We can control in which data selection to store 
section to store our shellcode by how we define and initialize the shellcode variables. The following are some examples that show how we can store the shellcode PE. First, defining the shellcode as a local variable within the main function will store it in the .txt PE section. Second, defining the shellcode as a global variable will store it in the data section. Another technique involves storing the shellcode in raw binary in an icon image and link it within the code. In this case, it shows up as the R source data selection. Four, we can add a custom data section to store the shellcode. Okay, so there's some ways we can store the shellcode. All right. All right, PBear, the attached VM is a Windows development machine that has a tool needed to parse exe files and read the details we discuss. For your convenience, we have provided a copy of PBear software on the desktop, which helps to check the PE structure header sections. PBear provides a graphical user interface to show all relevant exe details. To upload an exe file for Analysis, select the file, load PE, okay. Once the file is loaded, we can see all the PE details. The following screenshot shows the PE details of the loaded file, including the headers and sections we discussed earlier in this task. Now it is time to try it out. Load the thin intro to PE.exe to answer the questions below. The file is located in the following section. All right, cool. So uh, I'm gonna just log into my own virtual machine here. If you're using theirs, uh, I'm pretty sure all you need to do is um, hover over to the tab with it. All right, so first thing I like to do is just ping the IP address to see if I can get some kind of connectivity. Um, if you guys are unable to, then this is a good point to uh, try troubleshooting it because you're probably not going to be able to SSH in or you're not going to be able to um, RD, RDP in or, you know. So let me see. So yeah, I'm getting some kind of connection. All right, perfect. So this um, this should work, right? And unlike the last time, I, I think last time they had us use free X free RDP. Uh, you know, this time let's change it up. I'm going to use Mermina. I've, I've always liked it. A lot more. So, um, if if this works, I'll use it. And I know I've received comments from people saying, "Hey, you know, um, TryHackMe doesn't tell me to install this third-party software." Um, they actually do. There's there's a few rooms where they specifically tell you to use Romina for some of the tasks. It's a legitimate software. I wouldn't be recommending it if it wasn't. So um, let me just let's enter there. Maybe not for this one because at this point it's this is an intermediate room. They expect that you know how to do this already. Uh, may may be speaking to you guys, but there may be people who don't. So you never know. You know, I never like to assume that everyone knows what I know, because we all you know we all start somewhere. All right, I'm going to copy those credentials, paste that in here. And paste that in there. Oh. All right, it's going to connect for me. All right, perfect. And I kind of expand it. I love this button here. Click that, and then it just expands fully for me. And if I need to minimize it, I could just do that. No hotkeys, right? Just easy. Can move it up and down. All right, perfect. Let's move off to the next one here. All right, uh, PE Bear. So PE Bear is on the desktop. Very cool. And as we move further, I'm going to test something out real quick.
So it looks like PE Bear is um something that you can actually get from GitHub. So I'm gonna download this to my computer. Um because you never know when you might want to use PE Bear in the future. So I go to my desktop. And what would we call this? Shell code? Sure, why not? I don't think I have a folder for that. So create a new folder. Shell code. Open that up. Open up the terminal. Uh, get. And then I will input path. Oh, snaps. Put the path there. And it's cloning it. And I have a copy of PE Bear, future reference. All right, back to the lab. So um, what we'll do here is we'll open up the dim intro Good file, load PE, dim intro 2, open, expand, get the full view there. Oh, yeah. What is the last six digits of the MD5 hash of the value of, of this? Okay, so last six digits of the MD5 hash. Where can I find that? General exceptions view, maybe? Nope, okay. I'm just going to scroll through this. Hmm, hmm. All right, I guess we're going to have to click around for this one. Uh, I'm going to go to Signature, see if we can get something from Signature here. Nope, that ain't me anything. DOS header. All right. Um, Flag? Hey, there's a flag here. This flag, what is that? Hmm. Okay. Um hint. Check the general tab and look at the MD5 value. Hey, there we go. And they want the last uh last six. Okay. So I'm just going to input the last six. Three zero four three zero nine four nine. Three zero nine four nine. Oh. Okay, what am I doing wrong here? Um, There's last six digits. Oh, that's five. I'm missing one. Five. Okay, five. It's five, three. What is the magic number value of the X magic number value? Magic number value. Wish there was an easier way to search in this thing. Huh? All right. Well, I'm not familiar with this tool, so oh, they don't give a hint. Dang it. Hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, I know hex. So this is hex. And what are they looking for? They're just looking for oh, come on. Uh, magic value of the exe file. Okay. So I'm just gonna click here. Magic number value. I guess we're going to have to uh, either click around. Oh, here it is. 5A4D. 5A4D. 
what is the entry point value of this file? The magic numbers right here. Entry point. Entry point. So far, I've just gotten lucky. Uh, we'll take a hint. Check the option header tab and look at the entry point. Optional. Ah, oh, here we go. Entry points. Entry points. Ah, oh, here we go. One, two, E4. Two, E4. How many section does the them intro of the file have? Check the file header section. File header section, okay. Or count them manually. Seven. A custom section could be used to store extra data. Malware developers use this technique to create a new section that contains their malicious code and hijack the flow of the program. To jump an executable, the content of the new section, what is the name of the extra section? Um. I would say the R, this one right here, for the resources. Although it might be wrong. Let's give it a shot and see if it works. Nope. All right. The custom. Okay. Well, I guess this one is in it, the RSRC. Uh, I don't understand why that isn't it. Okay. Um, let me try it again. Nope. Custom, custom, new, maybe. With Check the content of the extra section. What is the flag? Huh. Um, we got seven sections. These are the sections, right? So it has to be one of these. I think it might be dot text. Because they do mention dot text up here for the, um, how would we go about slab, I guess. What is the contents of the extra section flag? Dot flag. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, because I've seen a, a flag section here. And yeah, I guess that's a custom section. What is the content of the flag? Let's click here. The contents. Is there a content tab here? You guys are pretty smart. I'm pretty sure you guys have already found it. I'm still struggling. Let's see where it's at. General? I'm just gonna click around until I find it. I feel like it would be under general, at least. All right, do we have a hint here? 
select the raw address or virtual address value. The raw address. Um, section header, raw address. All right, I'm going to pause it for this one. All right, I don't know if this is a raw address, but once I started clicking here in the flag, I can see there's a flag right here up here. Um, guess I'm going to have to type that in. P oh, wait. P E uh, N three W S three C T I O N. Ah, dang it. All right, uh, let me just look at this real quick. P E dash N three. W dash S three C T I O N. Oh, that's not exclamation. So let's change that. Yeah, yeah. All right, very cool. Uh, let's see what we got going on next. Task four intro to shell code. All right. Shellcode is a set of crafted machine code instructions that tell the vulnerable program to run additional functions and in most cases provide access to a system shell or create a reverse command shell. Once the shellcode is injected into a process and executed by the vulnerable software or program, it modifies the code run flow to update registers and functions of the program to execute the attacker's code. It is generally written in assembly language and translated into hexadecimal opcodes, operational codes. Written writing unique and custom shell code helps to evade AV software significantly, but writing a custom shell code requires excellent